It's Elena Tran here. I'm a dressmaker, blogger, and the founder of Bodekin Studio online fabrics and pattern store. I hope you all got the, your materials, your supplies, your patterns, because today we are starting our non-hour jacket. And we begin working on the front piece of the jacket. So here's our order of work. We're going to baste the underlining, quilt, mark buttonholes, and tape the front. So let's get started. We are taking the tweed piece wrong side up. So this is my right side, this is my wrong side. And then you are taking your interfacing. Make sure it's smooth, flatten it out line up all of the pieces. I will pin, first of all, match all the notches. So then what I'm doing is I will just baste these two layers together. So the reason why I'm, I'm doing that is for greater control. I just don't want anything to shift. Very simple, straight stitching, nothing fancy. Okay, then we are ready to quilt. So I'm going to turn it to the right side up because I need to determine where my quilting line is going to be. So I know that my quilting line is here. So I'm only going to do one on this front piece. And I know where it has to start and where it has to end. The quilting lines should be in authentic Chanel pieces, should be very inconspicuous. It should be invisible. It should blend with the fabric. You should not be able to see it. So you should choose the thread color that will match one of the threads on your, on your main tweed pattern. Uh, when you quilt, you have to follow the, the thread, follow your grain here. At this point, I'm taking a thread of a different color. Okay, so I'm going to start here. and I'm following this main thread. Until my quilting line ends over here. That's it. Okay, so leave a long thread and make diagonal basting stitches. Just 
to secure this position. Use the same color or the contrasting color. Okay, so now we are ready to take it to the sewing machine and you will sew a row of stitches next to the line that you marked. So set your stitch to four millimeters, about four to five millimeters, uh, the, the stitch length. And just go slowly. Okay, so now what we need to do is we'll need to um, bring the thread to the wrong side and tie it off, which is easy to do because the stitch length is quite long. And do the same on the other side. And that's it. So that's the first one. So let's repeat on the other front piece. You will need to remove all of these diagonal basting stitches and also the quilting line that you marked. And then you can also remove all of this basting that if you did the same way as I, I did and we'll be ready for the next step which is marking our buttonholes. So, and this is what we have. So now we're ready for our next step. I'm gonna fuse a small oval piece 
uh, of usable interfacing. But let's pause here for a moment. If you still do not have your actual physical button, you cannot proceed to this step. And the reason why is because uh, your button measurement may be different from, from this button hole that's on your pattern. Mine is different. My button is actually bigger than what's suggested by the pattern. The pattern suggests three quarter of an inch button. This one is an inch and maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna have these types of buttons in uh, the front, so five of these, and uh, maybe I'll make the smaller ones for, for the sleeves. And the inspiration for this actually came from this book. Uh, 20th century fashion in detail and look at this Chanel buttons. It's exactly what I want. So this is it. Uh, this is what I try to, to imitate. Um, so I think it turned out pretty good. So this is what I'm going to make. But because of that, I now need to modify my pattern. I'm using my um, pattern, just, just kind of pin it on, on top to see where I need to fuse these ovals. And of course, keeping in mind that my buttonhole is bigger. So from here, a little bit above the center line to all the way over here. I'm going to go ahead and fuse these pieces. So this is where Chanel jackets and classic tailoring meet. Uh, we are going to tape the front of the jacket, but before we do that, we need to trim some of this interfacing about, uh, I'd say a couple millimeters smaller than your seam line. So you have to be careful when you trim not to cut your main fashion fabric. Just go a little bit below this line and with our uh, interfacing, we can see it re very clearly. Go slowly, don't rush. This is where you don't want to mess up. So now we need to join interfacing to main fabric somehow. How do we do that? Uh, this basting thread that we have, which still holds these two layers together, is temporary. If I were to remove it, the two layers will just separate. So in order for us to keep the two layers together, we are going to use a tape. Um, this is what I have on hand, but if you do not have a tape uh, that we use in tailoring, you can use salvage from, from silk, from your silk. Another reason why you shouldn't throw anything away. But the key word here is pre-shrunk. You need to pre-shrink this. Another reason for taping is to keep the front of the jacket from stretching. This tape will keep it from stretching, will ensure that the front of your jacket uh, will hang straight. Uh, how much tape do we need? Here is 
when you need to have your pattern. On my pattern, I marked my seam allowances, 5 eighths of an inch from the bottom, 5 eighths of an inch from the side. I marked the same on this end and also marked the seam allowance on the center front. And I will tell you why in just a few minutes. So you will need to measure your tape from this point, 5 eighths of an inch. You don't want to extend it too low because don't forget it's gonna add bulk if you have this all the way to the end and when you fold it over there will be a huge bulk on this end and you don't want to have this bulk from seam allowance don't, don't pull it don't tug it too hard so just let it fall just kind of uh, with your finger just guide it across guide it across all the way to the other end to the other seam allowance here Put your finger here, I'm going to guide it here to the front for you. So put your finger here. This is where you're going to make a, a small cut, but not all the way through. So you're going to make a small cut here at the corner and you're going to kind of pivot the fabric, uh, the tape, sorry, pivot the tape this way and to the center front. And this is how much fabric, how much tape you will need for your front. Position the tape over the interfacing about one millimeter away from the seam line. Remember how we cut the interfacing two millimeters below the seam line? So this will be just slightly higher so that we can catch both layers. Uh, don't, don't pull it hard, just kind of uh, lay it flat and pin for now. the next thing you're going to do is baste it in the center of the tape. Repeat the same on the other front, then you will need to compare the two fronts. Particularly, you need to make sure that the pattern on both fronts match. And only after that, only after you satisfied satisfied that the patterns match, then we can proceed to the next stage. And so the next step is to sew the outer edge of the tape to your tweed fabric using fell stitch. Uh, the fell stitch, um, I usually work uh, from, from left to right, so it's just easier for me, but whichever way works for you. And then uh, you will just grab a small stitch of your tweed fabric, and then a small stitch of the tape at a 90 degree angle and you pull it through and just keep going. See, so one little tiny thread of the tweed, a tiny thread of the tape and pull through. I am choosing the matching um, thread, of course, and it's just regular Gutemann thread. You can use cotton. I just uh, 
I couldn't find the matching thread in uh, in in cotton or silk, so I'm just using regular gutterman. And the important thing is for this stitch not to show on the other side. The inner edge of the tape, we will be using another stitch and it's called whip stitch. So instead of picking, you know, one thread at a time, one thread of fashion fabric and one thread of, of or, and a little bit of the tape, you will actually make a bigger stitch through all of the layers. So after you finished um, attaching the tape, you need to press the, the edges very lightly. In the next video, I'll show you how to do handmade buttonholes. So I'll see you in the next video.